Rama Nation, Chris Cobain here bringing you the first video for week 5 of the National Pokemon Association, of course, aka the NPA. Last week we took on the uh, then 3-0 Joe Dore and the Seattle Sea Kings and we had one hell of a match, make sure you give that a look in case you haven't, that uh, was really decided by, by one misplay. Uh, and we ended up walking out with the victory, thanks in no small part to Garchomp and uh, the misplay with Mega Manectric, of course. So, uh, at this point in time, uh, there are three undefeated teams left. Um, myself, uh, Dan, and I believe Luke, the three coaches. Um, and thanks to Luke having a bye week and kill differential, the Blazikens are actually uh, currently going into week five the number one team in the NPA, um, only tied with Dan thanks to Luke having the bye week, and we have, I believe, one extra kill differential than he does, um, even with his six-star sweep of Cresselia in week two, I think, so, um, technically on top of the league right now, I'm feeling good about it, honestly, but, uh, there is no rest for the wicked, and we've got another uh, tough opponent coming in today, uh, which will be Miss Snow Bunny, uh, coach of the three and one, Golden State Go Goats and her team is very scary, um, very stallish as you're going to see. So let's go ahead and take a look at the breakdown of her team. We're starting off with Zapdos, fantastic tier one Pokemon. Um, Zapdos can do a lot of things, uh, but typically it'll be a special attacker and a wall of either physical or special nature. It's hard to say which. Um, access to Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, of course, Heat Wave, stuff like that, Defog, Roost. Um, those will be a thing. Um, it's her best hazard removal by a long shot, and possibly her only one, yeah, except for Rapid's been Cloister, yes. Um, so, expecting this thing to show up, it's, it's probably her best overall Pokemon, or maybe her second best overall Pokemon, and it's definitely can do some work to my team. Um, might expect some Hidden Power Ice for some Garchomp, for some, uh, Gligar, um, so we'll see what happens. But it could be a problem. Uh, second up was Cloyster, and Cloyster is a Pokemon that normally is incredibly scary. Uh, I brought up he can Rapid Spin. He actually can be a lesser known, but can be a lead set. Um, very physically defensive, base 180. Even when he's not invested, he's very bulky on that side. Um, he actually has access to, I believe, Spikes and Toxic Spikes. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, but Rapid Spin, of course, and all that stuff. And it's known set of, of course, the Shell Smash set, whether that's White Herb. Or Focus Sash, one or the other, Icicle Spear with Skill Link, Rock Blast, Ice Shard, access to Hydro Pump to be mixed. At plus two, that's going to hit hard. Um, it's very possible she brings it. I'm not very scared of it. We do have Jirachi uh, on our squad and uh, all Steel types essentially, especially one as bulky as Jirachi is going to handle it closer with no problem. So, she could bring it. Um, she could fear Jirachi too much to bring it. We'll see. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, third up is Snorlax. Snorlax is a pain in the butthole. A Pokemon I very well know. I use him quite often in UU as well, and I face him quite often being a UU battler as I am. Curse rests uh, set with, you know, Sleep Talk and Body Slam. Earthquake, Crunch, the Elemental Punches, can be Assault Vested, uh, can be Resto Chesto, doesn't even have to set up Curse. Um, Incredibly specially bulky, uh, incredibly specially bulky, one of the few Pokemon who actually has a chance of switching in on x Bloud, which it can, by the way. Um, uh, for that matter, and that matter alone, I'm 100% expecting Storlax to be on the team this week. And of course, uh, Body Slam Shrats, if she cares to run that uh, Paralysis potential. Um, the only counter I have that is Rotom. Um, she may fear Rotom enough to not bring it, but I would more assume that if she fears Rotom that much, she'd just bring Crunch. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, I do expect it, though. Uh, Dusclops is coming up next. Dusclops is uh, another very annoying Pokemon, as that continues to be a running theme of this team. Um, obviously, always going to be Eviolated. <clears throat> Will-O-Wisp Paint Split with an incredibly low HP stat. Um, it's, it's base, I think, 130 to both defenses make its HP stat... Uh, plus the Eevee Light, it doesn't really matter, it's that low, plus Pain Split heals him like everything, and no matter who he Pain Splits, it's actually really annoying. Um, he can be a rest set, um, to get rid of that with Sleep Talk, he can, he's gonna run Nightshade, of course, and that could be a problem. 
Uh, next up is going to be Aromatis. Aromatis is not quite a Pokemon I'm expecting, but that does not mean it won't show up. Um, it's a fairy type, of course. It's going to have Moonblast. It has wish, uh, wish Passing strats. It can Trick Room if she cares to do that. Quite a possibility. Actually, Dusclops could do that as well. Um, Aromatherapy makes a great Cleric. I do think she has a better option than Aromatis uh, later on, but we're going to get to that later. But still could happen. Uh, Crustle is her second cell Shell Smasher, uh, but based on the based on the build of the team, it, look, it more feels like Cloyster the Shell Smasher for a team. I mean, Crustle can still do it, but Crustle I feel like in this in this team is more built as a Hazard Stacker um, uh, with Rocks, of course. Could still could be definitely Shell Smasher, just still something to look out for, something that could be definitely a little bit scary to us, um, especially if it gets a Shell Smash off, it could do a lot of damage. Um, so we have to make sure we keep that in check, of course. Uh, Probably her overall her best Pokemon coming up next is her Mega. That'll be Mega Slowbro. One of the best Megas in OU. Very good pickup for her. Very stally. Another very annoying Pokemon. Um, does lose Regenerator, uh, which is a which is a downside. In fact, I think at the point which I'm recording this, regular Slowbro is more popular in the OU than the Mega is, but that doesn't mean anything for Mega. It's very strong, very powerful, calm mind, uh, slack off of course. It has a multitude of attacks it can run, including Scald, Psy, Shock. Psychic, Fire Blast, Ice Beam, stuff like that. Um, also susceptible to being a Trick Room team. Could be very scary, so that's something we definitely have to look out for. But it's a possibility. Uh, next up, though, is Umbreon. Uh, this is the one I said would probably be a better option as, a, for, as far as a Cleric and Wish Pastor can go than Aromatisse. I do have Jirachi. I feel like Aromatisse is a, is a meant decision to bring, but that doesn't mean she won't bring it. But Umbreon does the jobs just as well. Of course, Wish Passing. Um, Clericking, of course. I can do that well. It can be a setup sweeper with curse and uh, payback or foul play. Um, more payback with curse set, but can have foul play as well, which can really punish a lot of my physically attacking Pokemon, such as Garchomp and uh, even Verizion. Since a Verizion's physical block is not that great, um, can definitely be a pain in my butt, um, and I somewhat do expect it. Next up is Gudra. Gudra is typically assault vested. It can do a multitude of things. Um, it's a really good physical attacker. It's a really good special attacker. It can be mixed as well. If he brings it, I 100% expect Earthquake. Um, uh, but that's not a guarantee. We'll see what happens. Um, if it comes, I'm assuming it's probably going to be mixed. Uh, something along the lines of, of like something with like Dragon Pulse and Earthquake and possibly Power Whip for like Slow King. Um, maybe like Sludge Wave or Fire Blast for Celebi. Possibly, but we'll see what happens. Could come, not sure. Uh, mascot of her team is going to be Go Goat, of course. Go Goat is a pretty good special wall. It has access to Milk Drink, one of the few Pokemon that do. Um, Horn Leech has a really good stab attack. It can run Bulk Up, and Bulk Up plus the special, uh, special defensive set makes it very bulky on both sides and allows it to hit very hard, along with having a move that heals it with Horn Leech as it wrecks your team. So that could be a problem. I do have answers to it, um, but it's definitely an option and could be very scary. And the uh, running off her team is our final Pokemon, which is going to be Kling Clang, another Pokemon I know very well myself. Uh, of course, Shift Gear, Gear Grind, not jokes, very scary. Um, I can learn Wild Charging around Return, it could be a substitute set. Um, if this thing steps up a gear, uh, a Shift Gear, it could potentially do a lot of damage to my team, and it's another thing I have to definitely look out for, just in case she brings it. Alright, so... Uh, moving on from there, it is time now to look at our team and what we're running and why, of course. Um, and starting off with the team, this is not my team, this is actually Trade Fodder, and it's just, oddly enough, Garchomp is the one sitting there. Um, starting off my team this week is, I believe for the fourth straight week, MC Hammer the Garchomp, and he's running basically the same stuff we've been running on him for a long time because it's proven very helpful. He is very strong and he's very big. Uh, on my team, and one of the league leaders in kills, uh, one of the league's uh, top uh, top Pokemon in, gen uh, in general, and he's run basically the same stuff every week. <clears throat> and there's li literally no no better person to run this against uh, than who we're facing this week. Jolly, Rough Skin, Leftovers. He's a sub Sorzant set with Earthquake and Dragon Claw. There isn't a single Pokemon on her team that can deal with both at the same time. Um, Slowbro will be her best bet. And when it comes to this, Sub is because of her team's incredible block. It can set up on Dusclops with it has enough HP investment to live one, um, or to, to Sub to survive one Nightshade, which is a big deal. Um, it can stop things like uh, Slowbro from, from Toxicing if it wants to run out. Umbreon for sure as well. Aromatase as well. She's got a lot of, a lot of stall, a lot of, uh, a lot of potential, um, 
set up here, or c catch a Roma teach on a wish, stuff like that. But if we can get up a, su a substitute against something, preferably, po probably, like the uh, Dust Clops, we can set up Swords Dance and start going ham. Um, this thing's EVs are 172 HP, 92 attack, uh, because the 172 HP, uh, as you can, well, his HP is 400, it allows him to live one, uh, or as long as, again, allows the substitute to live one, uh, Nightshade without breaking, so we can set up on that, leftovers help, uh, the other way, 92 attack, because the rest of it is 244 speed, which allows it to outspeed, of course, max speed Zapdos, a theme you'll see here, uh, shortly. Uh, moving on, uh, the third, I think the, the, the second, or th the third week actually we've run this, um, and I think in a row as well, and it's the tier one pick of our team, and that one's gonna be Make-A-Wish, the Jirachi, it's gonna be Calm, Serene Grace of course, and Leftovers as well, um, this thing will be a pretty big special wall for us, and it is the main counter to Cloyster, um, it's EV spread is 244 HP, 148 special defense, of course with the Calm nature, allowing it to be very specially bulky, and 116 speed, which allows it to outspeed max speed, um, uh, Cloyster, uh, Thunderbolt, because Thunderbolt will one-hit Cloyster and threaten Slowbro, even without any investment, uh, Stealth Rocks, because she's only got the one hazard remover and Zapdos, and he does not appreciate rocks, Toxic, because it helps to wear down her team, she's got two Clerics, um, of course, but one Aromatisse, uh, she's too afraid to have Aromatisse in anyway, anyway, and Umbreon can't get synchronized, and of course we have, we'll have uh, ways to switch in on Umbreon as well. Um, and Wish, uh, just just in case, it's more of like a last last ditch uh, strategy um, in case she tries to, to to wear some things out. If we can like get a Wish pass in on one of her bulkier Pokemon, maybe even Garchomp, something like that, uh, then uh, we will be able to keep her health alive. And of course, it's to help itself as well. Um, it's invested enough to live anything from Cloyster even at plus two. It easily beats Cloyster even if it switches in on him. Uh, and uh, can actually take two plus two Hydro Pumps assuming it's not invested in special attack, which I doubt it would be. Uh, moving on uh, to the third uh, third pick is the Pokemon that finished off last week's battle by Hidden Power Firing the Vera Seed. And that is going to be my Mega, Mega Me, the Deancey. Um, I'm pretty excited about this set this week. Uh, it's gonna be Timid, Clear Body, of course, uh, chaining in a Magic Bounce, which is a stalling Pokemon's nightmare. And of course, the Deanceite. Uh, Moonblast, Calm Mind, Substitute, Earth Power. So we're not running, um, we're not running, uh, Diamond Storm this week, but we don't need it. We don't need Protect because this team is so, um, so bulky. We can set up, we can, uh, our, uh, Mega in front of a lot of things, including stuff like Snorlax, Dusclops, Aromatisse, um, Umbreon, pr uh, probably even Gudra if it's minimum speed, Slowbro, that kind of stuff. So we don't, we didn't, we didn't feel like we need to protect. Um, Substitute is there just in case. Um, doesn't absolutely 100% need it, but for, for, for certain situations, it could be very helpful. And of course, we'll be trying to wish pass into this sometimes if, if need be. Um, a wish from Jirachi almost totally heals it. Uh, I think in test runs, we did one where Dur Dancy had like 20% health, and it literally put it at max health. Um, so that could be a big deal for us. Uh, of course, the plan here, it cannot live one um, Nightshade, because unfortunately, its HP set is just nowhere near high enough to be able to do that. But, uh, but it can set up in front of a couple of things. Mainly the Umbreon and uh, potentially do a lot of work there, and that's the plan. Earth Power is just for Kling Clang, basically. Uh, can also do some work to some of the other things he's got, um, just in case. But uh, mainly that's going to be for Kling Clang, just in case we have a way to take that out if it's there. Uh, fourth pick is one of the more surprise ones for me. Um, I knew I knew when we picked him he'd be a big deal, but uh, he's been a very big deal for us as of late, and um, I love having him on the team. And that's going to be get over here. The Drapion, and I'm a very big fan of this one. Oh, by the way, excuse me, Dancy's uh, EVs are 92 HP, 236 special attack, and 180, uh, excuse me, 180 speed, which helps it outspeed again. Max speed. Zapdos, just so you guys know. Anyway, getting on to Drapion here, he's going to be a jolly battle armor, of course, for no crits. We don't need the sniper this week. And Shookaberry, Shookaberry's going to have any damage from ground attacks. That is a big deal against something like an Earthquake Gudra. Or a Crustle, mainly it's going to be for Crustle, possibly Earthquake Snorlax as well, possibly Earthquake Go-Goat, 
as well. He's got a lot of potential to use some ground attacks. Uh, excuse me, they're a little flash. Um, but Shook is uh, going to be a lot helpful for us. Knockoff because of the utility, of course. Um, Dustclops mainly, but it can definitely do a lot of work. It's the only thing that's uh, going to be... You know, not going to be knocked off is going to be the Mega, of course, and Slowbro, who does not, is not, especially without Regenerator, does not appreciate and take a one. Uh, we can knock off a lot of potential things. Taunt is a very obvious play here. Uh, all the stall, all the bulk, all the healing, every person, everything on this team has the potential to run, uh, or basically on all their sets run status. Defogger, Roost, Shell Smash, Curse, um, Willow. Wish, Shell Smash again, or Rocks, or Calm Mind, um, Umbreon can curse or heal, Gudra, eh, typically Assault Vested, Gogo likes to bulk up a Milk Drink, Kling Kling likes to shift gear, so Taunt is a big deal on him. Toxic Spikes, <clears throat> no Poison type, uh, two Immunities, Kling Kling and Zapdos, um, one Hazard Remover, Zapdos, two Clerics could be an issue, uh, but as long as we can play around them a little bit, um, and we can actually taunt at least Umbreon, not Aromatisse because of its Aroma Veil. But we can taunt Umbreon as well. And um, Toxic Spikes can really super wear down. Especially if the if she does not bring Aromatisse and only brings Umbreon and I can taunt that. We're in business. We're in a lot of business. And uh, Poison Jab to round it off. Um, just we uh, debated Swords Dance here, but meh. Uh, Poison Jab is more to help clean up with Umbreon. It beats Go-Goat as well. Um... That's that's uh, that's basically all of it right there. Um, uh, Ro uh, excuse me, Romatis as well would be the bigger one. Uh, his EVs are gonna be 252 HP, 196 attack, and we have him uh, 16 speed, which uh, allows him to outspeed max speed Cloister. Uh, we could have went for like enough speed to outspeed like a minimum speed Zapdos, but we don't know what spread she's gonna run. She could run any amount of uh, even if it's defensive, she has the ability to run some EVs and speed to outspeed stuff like Drapion specifically. So. It might it wasn't really worth it, so we just went for the cloister when we can now taunt cloister, uh, which is obviously a big deal and stuff like that. So, tax spikes can be huge for us. Please stop doing that, 3ds. Excuse me, guys. I'm never. I don't have this problem very often. There we go. All right. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Technical difficulties, of course. Uh, so moving on. It made its debut last week, but unfortunately, it never saw the field of play. It was our crawl out counter. Hopefully, this week it can do something more. Never had the chance last week. It's gonna be Verizion. Um, similar set to, uh, to last week, uh, almost exactly the same one, actually, I think. Um, it's gonna be Jolly, Justified, Lumberry, uh, Close Combat, Swords and Stone Edge, Leaf Blade, nothing too out there. Um, pretty common, it's got a Lumberry, so it can, you know, take, uh, a Will-O-Wisp, uh, set up a Swords Dance, maybe a Body Slam from Snorlax, something like that, get burnt by, like, a Scald on a Switch-In from Slowbro. Um, T-Wave from Zapdos, whatever have you, you know, easy stuff like that. Um, point of this is to come in, it's our main counter to, uh, or not counter, but our name, main answer to Snorlax. If we can knock the Evulate off of Dusclops, there's no true answer to this on our entire team, literally. Um, that, the uh, Dusclops is the only answer. If there's no Dusclops, this thing can sweep. If it, there is Dusclops and we can knock off a Drapion, this thing can again sweep after one sword Dance pretty easily. Stone Age, of course, for Zapdos. Um, it is going to be running 60 HP, 252 attack, and 196 speed, while Jolly, of course, yet again, third time, enough to outspeed, you guessed it, max speed Zapdos. I don't 100% think she's going to bring back speed Zapdos. I feel like she really wants to run the uh, the Defog set with the bulkier set this week because we do have so many potential rockers and the Toxic Spiker and Drapion. So I feel like she's going to try to want to remove Hazard Sacking. But always nice to play it safe anyway. So this thing hopefully can make a really good impression. Both it and Jirachi have not been able to do much this year at all. This thing has never seen the, the field. And Jirachi has only U-turned, literally, I think, so far in this. But uh, hopefully, that'll be that'll change this week, most definitely. Uh, at least for Jirachi. And uh, coming in at the final spot is maybe the uh, probably second place in terms of team, MV uh, team MVP so far this season, along with Garchomp being number one, of course. And that's going to be, to me, the best late-round pickup of the season so far. No other late-round pickup has been as crazy as this guy has. And we've been running some fire sets. And it ain't changing this week. We are running x Bloud and check him out. I am very excited for this set. Modest, Scrappy for Dusclops, Chest Resto, Chesto Workup set. This thing, it could be absolutely devastating. 
Um, this thing is, it's got Boom Burst, Work Up, Rest with the Chesto Berry, and Focus Blast. Focus Blast is 100% on there for Umbreon and Snorlax alone. It can set up a couple of Work Ups in front of a couple of things, because more likely than not, she will not be expecting the rest at all. Even if she sees the Work Up, expecting the rest would be out there. Um, if she stays in and tries to wear me down, thinking chip damage is going to be a big deal with anything, uh, like Dusclops, like Umbreon, even like Slowbro, or Aromatis, I, if I can set up a couple of workups, and then, or even two or three, maybe four even, depending on the mod, and then click rest, we just, we just completely dominate, that's the point, that is his plan, um, we've run some crazy sets for x I, I don't even think we've run, uh, Specs yet, to my knowledge, no, excuse me, we did run Specs, but the one with the, against Elliot with the Sleep Talk, um, this thing is 156 HP, uh, 252 special attack and modest, of course, and 100 speed, which allows it to outspeed minimum speed Gudra. Um, also allows it to outspeed some other things, um, but it's mainly going to be for the Gudra. Um, no guarantee she runs minimum speed uh, at all, but uh, if she's running the Assault Vest set, uh, that'll be what she's doing. And it's already got enough bulk with 156, uh, 156 HP, so we felt like it was a fair risk. To take the little bit of H, uh, the little bit of HP away for that speed, just in case. Um, this thing could be a big deal as well, uh, and that's uh, that's gonna be it. So what we're looking for really this week is we're looking to set up rocks with Jirachi. We're looking to set up toxic spikes with uh, with Drapion. Taunt some things. Knock off Dra uh, Knock off um, anything, preferably the dust clops though. And then basically just move on from there and and try to pick up with with the chip damage from toxic spikes and rocks uh, with the potential healing from uh, and wearing down from toxic and the healing from wish from Jirachi. Uh, the plan is to help to, to help use these two as support Drapion and Jirachi and and use them to make our four sweep four four setup sweepers on this team: Garchomp, Diancy, Virizion and x -Blot. all are set up sweepers and the pan the point is literally just to just to wear them down enough with damage with one of our other sweepers or with hazards or with whatever else and then finish her off with one of our sweepers here i feel like it's a really good strategy um we definitely definitely have the ability to win this week i'm not incredibly fearful of the team because our team does eat stall it will definitely scare her and uh hopefully hopefully we can get another Decent, you know, three, maybe four oh win on our side. Not trying to be, you know, cocky, of course, or anything, but that would hopefully be the plan if everything goes the way I'd like it to. And um, we can remain on top of the league for another week. But that remains to be seen. We still have to do the match, of course, and she definitely can throw in some curveballs against me. Um, that could definitely throw me for a loop and possibly uh, swing, the fa uh, swing the momentum on her side. So we'll see what happens. It'll be a good match. And, of course, you guys can look forward to that tomorrow. Um, and that, guys, will be about it for me. So, as per usual, thank you guys for watching the video. Much appreciated. I hope you all are looking forward to week 5 and your current 4-0 Baltimore Blazikens going for that 5-0 and, and continue the undefeated streak further into the season as we try to just stack as many wins as possible to give us more leeway later on in the season, which could definitely be nice for us. Um, but, uh, I will see you guys in the match. And I guess that's about it. So, I'm out. I'll see you guys in week five as the Blazikins take on Miss Snow Bunny and the Golden State Go-Goats to attempt to go to 5-0 and and continue dominating the league, all right? All right, peace, Romination. See y'all in week five.